Good morning, everyone. It's 6.40 a.m. August 4th. My name is Amal. I'm going to do your morning Bitcoin and altcoin analysis. Also, throughout the video, I'm going to give you all a strategy of how you can understand how to be bullish or bearish uh, as per an indicator on Bitcoin. So it helps you understand um, a ranging strategy versus a trending strategy and how you can utilize that particular indicator as support or resistance to be either long or short. Okay, so let's first dive into the analysis. Okay, so a lot's happened since the weekend, right? Um, again, for our Advantage members, I make them videos twice a day. I make free videos here and there now, um, you know, but if you are interested in videos two times a day, you can come join our Advantage community. As you can see, uh, all these meeting recordings, I have live Zoom sessions with our members. Uh, I post these videos pretty much every single evening, every single morning, and I let people know my thoughts exactly on the market, exactly what I'm seeing in the market, et cetera, okay? So, going to our analysis. So the first thing that I've noticed, you know, when we were breaking out of this is I told you all that the best way to look at, um, you know, this particular movement that was happening between 11.4 and down to 10,600 when we had this big push up last week, right? You could have seen this as a A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so this is a big triangle. And when you're um, creating triangles like this, right? First of all, typically, if you do start pushing out of it, it's, it's going to be a continuation pattern. And the target is basically measured, you know, kind of like this, right? From the high to the low right there. Oops, so let me grab it a little bit closer. And then the breakout outside the triangle. So you can see we broke out of the triangle right about there. So we place the breakout right there. And we say, okay, where does that take us? Well, as you can see, that takes us right around $12,000, $12,100. I stated the target a little bit under this marker, which is 12,075 or so. Um, and I think most of our community was able to get out and take profit right into this wick right here. And all that is proof in our Advantage community channel right here. Okay, I'm going to show you all some of the trades that we've been taking. Okay, where's the 12K? Uh, so yeah, we took profit 11.4. Uh, where's the 12K marker? Let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess... This is from uh, yesterday. I'm trying to show you guys the ones from a couple days ago. There it is, okay, perfect. So here's me closing my position right at 12,000 flat, okay? Because that was obviously one of our targets that we were looking forward to, okay? Um, and then I had also moved my stop up at 11,600. My entry was actually, um, let me see what my entry was. Oh, my entry was 11,088, okay? So we got some really good target profits, right? Because as soon as we enter the trade, guys, uh, you know, here's the thing, right? When we um, create a trade, when we enter a trade, okay, what we are effectively doing is, um, first of all, we're creating a game plan before we even get started and enter a trade. We know where our stop is, we know where our target profits are, and we know exactly you know, how much to start cutting our position as soon as we get to those target profits. So as you can see, I cut one third of my position uh, at 11,700, a uh, third of my position at 11,400, and then cut you know, a little bit around that 12,000 target that I just showed y'all earlier. Um, and you know, I think that was pretty much it, right? Because here's the thing, when we were getting to this level, I also stated to my Advantage members, all right, right here, that, and this happened in the morning, I think August 1st, 7 a.m., right? So that was effectively like, I think right around this area right here when we were pushing up, okay? Um, I stated to our members that this might be the local top, as you can see, okay? So I stated this, you know, 12, 13 hours before that big uh, drop happened. And the reason why I'm explaining to you um, all this information, guys, is because you need to be aware of situations like this where you're not caught off guard when you see a big dump happening. 
Now, no one can really predict that there's going to be a big dump happening, but there are clues in the market that will always show you that something feels off, we might be topped off, um, or you may not want to be you know, aggressively long or short in a particular direction because the market is showing you strength or weakness uh, in that particular direction. And so you know, here are some of the reasons why I stated uh, we might be at a local top around 11, 7, 12K. I stated extended RSI, we hit the 11.8K key level, which again dates back to 2019. Uh, I'll show you all real quick. So this was a key level that I was talking about, okay? It dates back to way back here, as you can see. All right, all this was resistance, deviation pushes back down, resistance sells off, pushes up, hits it, resistance, deviation sells off. And you can see right there, not a single candle was actually able to um, close above that area and hold. So that particular marker, which you know, most people were not paying attention to, you know, we got pretty spot on, okay? So point is, we look at all the different nuances and all the different things that could happen in a market. We're not just perpetually bullish or perpetually bearish. We're often you know, looking at how things could go wrong. Uh, we're looking at areas to take profit. We're looking at how to manage or trade actively um, and take the most amount of profit off the table. So anyway, if you want this kind of granular analysis and you know, twice a day videos and these kinds of updates, um, come join Advantage membership, all right? The link is below. So let's dig into these smaller time frames. okay? On the one hour, this is kind of what I see right now. This was really the range. Remember the triangle that I just showed you all earlier? right? This triangle right here. Okay. This is the key high. This is the key low. Okay. Let's go to one hour. So the one hour, I'm kind of seeing something like this. This is the range high. And then this is the range low because this is the first wick that tapped it. And then we bounced back strongly. This is, you know, again, a deviation push to the downside. Then we pushed up, tapped it again as support, pushed up, tapped it again as support, pushed up, and then again, we came back to that area of support. So this is why I consider, if I actually do a uh, colored rectangle here, okay, I think this is really the range that we should be, oh, I'm sorry, this one right here. This is the range that we need to be focusing on, all right? As you can see, when we were ranging right here, we pushed up and out of it, but again, the, this candle right here brought us back inside this range. Right? So I think this is actually a very important range for us to be paying attention to. Now, what do I think about this range? Well, personally, um, I wouldn't short it. I think BTC is fairly bullish still. As long as we stay above this 10.5, uh, 10.6 marker, and remember, that comes from this key area, right? This key area right here, which pushed up, broke through, and this key marker right here, 10,584, all right? And that dates back to October, February, and then pretty much range high right here around June. So as long as we stay above this area, even on a one hour basis or a four hour basis above this marker, I think we're still bullish. And I would buy all pullbacks into this area. Heck, if I get a pullback into this area right here, that is a perfect liquidity grab because it squeezes out all the longs from right here and it helps us get a pretty decent target, at least to the weekly open. If we break above that, 11.4. If we break above that, then 11.7, 11.8. All right, but I would not short because I don't really think your um, targets for shorts or your time frame for shorts is going to be, um, is going to be that big, to be honest. You know, you might get some quick spike downs here and there, but I just don't think it's worth shorting right now. There are times where I've told y'all that I've been short. I, I you know, I've told y'all that uh, this whole range back here, I was shorting, right, for almost 50, 55 days. And once we broke out of this area, I went long as soon as we climbed above the weekly open, and I've been long ever since. So there are times to be short, then there are times to be long, personally. I think it's time to be long and it's time to buy pullbacks on the longs. Another nifty trick that I like to use is the weekly open. 
as long as we stay above the weekly open, okay, which opened again two days ago, right, Sunday, um, I consider price action bullish. Because here's the thing, when, when weekly or monthly opens open, um, what typically happens is the bots and the algos are trying to rearrange their, uh, their defense levels, if you will. Okay, they're trying to figure out, okay, well, we close about this area. If we're to remain bullish, we should keep driving up the price from this level, right? But if that's not the case, and we start breaking past that level, that means the major algos and bots who are defending that level have stopped defending that level. So that means something has gone wrong. That means you might want to consider flipping to the other side, maybe being temporarily short, or maybe just not being in a long position until weekly open gets reclaimed, okay? The other strategy, the strategy that I particularly think is very important is the VWAP. I don't know if you guys have used the view app before, but it's basically um, volume weighted average price. All it's effectively doing is it's grabbing, as you can see per the definition here, it's the dollar value of all trading periods divided by the total trading value for the current day. Now this is again, you know, for the, the session view app, you can turn the view app into um, a weekly, a monthly, <clears throat> a decade, a century, anything really. But I like to use a session view app because all it's really doing is it's calculating the view app for every single session. And so for every single session, meaning every single day, uh, it's effectively creating this line, the volume weighted average price. And the formula is pretty simple. Okay. What you're effectively doing is you're, um, multiplying the typical price, meaning the highs, lows, and close divided by three times the volume for that day divided by the cumulative volume. And that helps you generate this kind of line. Why is that important? Well, it helps you understand that in the particular trading period that we're in, the trading session versus the overall um, you know, session volume that it's grabbing or the cumulative volume that it's grabbing, where is price in relation to the VWAP, meaning the average price as per volume? Well, right now price is under it, meaning it's bearish. When price is over it and it's using this VWAP as support, it's bullish. It's really that simple. And the strategy is so great that you could use this on any time frame. I find it useful on the 15 minute because it helps you get a smaller granular look on the candles. But the VWAP doesn't change because you change 15 minute to one hour to four hour. It's gonna remain the same. The VWAP will change if you change its uh, anchor period right here. If it goes from session to week to month, year, decade, century, et cetera. So we're keeping this on session. And what session is telling us right now is that price is under the VWAP. So at, pre at present moment, price is actually a bit more bearish than it is bullish. So if you're waiting for um, a long position or a confirmation for a long, you want to wait for price to get above the VWAP like it did back here or come back and use that support like it did back here. Now, I also just talked about the weekly open, right? So again, weekly open right there. You can see we tapped it right there perfectly. If we start getting a 15 minute or a one hour close below the weekly open, well, chances are we're probably gonna go lower down here around maybe 10,950, um, 10,000, <clears throat> excuse me, $10,850, somewhere around that area, okay? If we're looking at the CME chart, all right, the one thing that kind of concerns me is we had this big triangle, you know, ascending triangle that was being created um, not this A, B, C, D, E triangle, but we tried to escape out of this triangle. You know, I think this was Friday. Couldn't do it. Came back, used that area of support. Then over the weekend, obviously, we got a big sell-off, right? We dropped almost $1,000, $1,500 when we had this big spike down. And so that when the CME opened, we were way the heck down here. The CME luckily pushed up, closed up this gap right here, yet we're still not able to hold above this area, which is this key range high, as you can see. Why is that range high important? 
Well, that's the first level that we hit right there. Resistance, resistance, broke through, came back down. Again, pushed up, came back down. So the fact that we're not able to hold above this area kind of concerns me that, well, maybe we have more downside ahead of us. Now, where's that downside? Well, remember, a big CME gap is way the hell down here, around $9,600, right? That's a pretty darn, you know, deep gap. Um, so effectively, it's possible that, you know, Bitcoin could drop to that level. Do I think it's going to happen right now? I don't know. I, I personally don't think so because I think BTC is bullish and I think, you know, all dips right now are being bought up. You can see that in the buying activity. You can see that in the volume. Um, but, you know, again, CME players are much bigger whales. So it's very possible that, you know, they may dump another 5,000 Bitcoin and allow this cascading to start and we fill up this gap in less than a few hours. Another way you can, I guess, look at the market is you could say, okay, well, if we start, you know, breaking below this, this key marker, which was the wick low right here, um, and that is... 10,560. If you start breaking below that, you know, chances are pretty high that we had way the heck down here, or at least at least at this candle right here, $9,600. And if we get to 9,600, which is the sideways period before we pushed off, well, then that means, you know, we're definitely filling this gap in for the CME. So these are all possibilities. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't think so. I think, um, you know, even Sunday video I made for the Advantage members, I stated that when we came down into this area, I stated we're probably going to chop around here for a couple of days. And we've already do, been doing it for two days now, right? Um, if we start getting the uh, below the weekly open and maybe, you know, we see a spike down right, right here around 10,900, 10,850, and we start pushing back up, well, that could be your quick scalp long position, you know? You can have a scalp long if you get into a long entry right there, stop below this area, and you can start targeting, again, this range high, which is around $11,400. Now, the 11.4 marker is particularly important to close above. And I know when everybody was getting excited that we were all the way up here around 11.8, 12,000, that we've broken through this marker. But remember, this happened Saturday when we were up here. You know, by the time Saturday night came around, we got set down 1500 bucks. So anything can happen in the last you know, 24 hours uh, remaining in a weekly candle. And this is exactly what happened. Um, so you could see this 11.4 marker, we have not been able to close above since basically this candle right here, January 2018. Every single candle right here has closed below that level. Well, these are slightly above that level, obviously, but I think you get the gist, right? Um, so closing above that marker guys is particularly important. So if you're waiting for a confirmation, you need at least a daily close, um, above 11.4. Okay. Two daily closes would be better. A weekly close would be the best because if you get a weekly close above 11.4, which is 11.483, well, then you're effectively targeting the next big resistance level, which is right around 14,000 or 13,920 to be exact, as per BitMEX. All right, let's check out LINK. So we've been in a long position in LINK for I think a couple of weeks now, or maybe a couple of days actually. Um, you know, still doing all right. LINK is doing its own thing. Let me see what's going on. Let's see what's going on with my chart here. Okay. All right. So if we're looking at link, right, the one thing that kind of concerns me is there's definitely this uh, uh, divergence building. You could see the higher high right there. And obviously, you know, a pretty clear lower high right there. Right. Um, if we start turning over, then that bearish divergence is going to be validated. However, to beat the bearish divergence link must the RSI must exceed this key level right here. And so obviously, you know, link needs to keep pushing higher and higher. Um, 
it's possible we could just keep doing that, uh, but it's also possible that maybe over here we level off, maybe turn back down and get a retrace in, uh, and then you know start pushing back up, maybe after we reset the RSI. But I am in a link long, I'm fairly confident that you know um, link is going to do better for the next several weeks, several months. So you know we actually trade a lot of altcoins in our community. So if you are interested, uh, you can come join. The Discord link is below. Here's the altcoin trading area. We have DeFi analysis, the scalp altcoins. Uh, what altcoins are we buying for spot positions and then leverage long positions, etc. Let me see here. Let's see what else is going on. Um, there's this big parallel channel that I've been watching for several days now. You know, we had this ABCDE triangle push up and out. You know, we did the same thing right here, ABCDE triangle push up and out. And so this was another reason why I stated that you could effectively use this triangle. So we use the fib retracement from this, or I'm sorry, the fib extension from this key high to this key low. And you can see price made it just below the 1.618. I stated that you could also use this triangle the same way where you use the 1.618 extension. Um, let me see, right about there, right? So high to low extension gets us to about $11,900. So if you would have just used that same technique, I mean, you would have been just fine. You would have avoided this big wick. I think the, the problem I think with most people is, you know, in, in bullish markets, people often get more stressed because they don't really know when to take profit because they're making so much money. It's great. But I've told y'all before that when you see numbers on a screen of unrealized PNL, that doesn't, that doesn't really mean anything. Okay. Money only matters. Profit only matters when there is realized profit. Okay. When there's money being taken out into your account where you know that, okay, no matter what happens to the price, now my money's not going to get impacted. Um, money is also much better realized or profit is best utilized when you use it for your own life, whether you have to buy a new car or, um, you know, pay off a uh, loan or, you know, whatever you need to do, right? Whatever you need to do to enhance your life, make your life a little bit better, make your life a little bit less stressful. That's how you need to utilize uh, money earned in profit from markets. And most people don't do that. And so this is why I state that whenever we enter longs or shorts, anything in our community, now, even the past, I think, day or two, um, what do we do? We entered a long position like right here, just on the breakout of this trend line because we were above the weekly open. We broke out of the first trend line right here. So we entered a long right there and we took profit at $11,400. Why 11.4? Because that was above this key wick high, meaning there was probably some liquidity from short positions and their stops sitting above here. Okay, so not only is it important to have a game plan of how you want to enter a trade and exit a trade, but you need to figure out reasons why price could reach a particular level, just like I stated. So here's us entering a trade, as you can see, around 11,135 and exiting at uh, 11.4, okay? So, you know, it wasn't really a, um, a huge risk for us to enter, right? I mean, you could see, Right here, price pretty much um, entered back into the triangle on the CME chart. And I also found confluence, like I stated earlier, on the 15 minute chart, we were breaching this trend line right here. Um, and so price was, you know, 11 and one thirties or so. And so we entered a long position and then we took profit around 11.4. We raised our stop loss. And I think we got stopped out after that because um, price dumped right back into this view app again. And so we got stopped out in profit, right? Because uh, 11,135 was our entry. We raised our stop to a protective sell at 11,280. So this is how you make profit and keep it, guys. Okay. Um, let me sh uh, let's check out Ethereum, actually. So um, I, I think ETH has been you know, obviously a, a leader in the market, right? I think a leader in a sense that it has been leading Bitcoin quite a bit, more so than it has been following. So the way I'm looking at ETH right now is, 
All right, let's look at it this way, okay? Um, let's check this out right here. Let's throw this line right around there. So I think for ETH, these two lines particularly are important because these are, you know, the smaller trend lines. Uh, let's move that higher from this key high and then this key high. Um, ETH is actually below both. Now stated that if you want to stay bullish, right, you want to stay above both these trend lines. And then let's check out the view app on ETH as well. That's the weekly view app. So let's check out session. So look, same thing, just like I stated earlier about the view app. Price of ETH is below the view app. So right now we're actually bearish. Okay, not only that, we're below these two black markers that are going across. So in my opinion, I think ETH could probably pull down further to these levels right here, at least this low 372 and maybe even this low around 360 or so, okay? It may not happen with a sharp drop. It may just keep grinding down slowly. But I do think that when ETH made, you know, this kind of grinding movement back up, kind of like this, right? One, it kind of created like a wedge. Uh, and two, grinding movements after, when you get a big drop like this, grinding movements often like this uh, signify that there's might, uh, there might be another drop to come. Now, I don't know how deep that drop is going to be, but this is just my uh, experience telling me that more often than not, grinding movements like that after a big drop often lead to another bit of a pullback. So do be careful on ETH. But I do think that ETH in, you know, say the daily time frame is still fairly bullish. Um, I don't think there's anything large to be concerned about, but you don't want to be longing where we are right now. You know, maybe you could buy some of the pullbacks, you know, back into 350 or 360 levels. Let me see here. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. I think that covers it. You know, I gave you all analysis on Bitcoin. I told you how to utilize the weekly open, the VWAP. We looked at different time frames. Um, I showed y'all how the advantage community has been killing it in our long positions and how to develop a game plan, how to take profit, how to have measured moves. You know, when you have a triangle being created, how to create a measured target from that triangle, right? So we covered link, we covered Ethereum. I think that's pretty much it. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the content. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you did, leave me a comment of your thoughts. And until then, come join the Advantage membership or the free Discord channel below. The link is below in the YouTube description. Till then, I'll catch y'all later. Keep your stops tight, take profit, and I'll see y'all soon.